Can you tell me a little bit more about what's new in the Dungeon Master's Guide? First and foremost, uh, the Dungeon Master's Guide is bigger. Like all of the revised 5th edition books, we have added pages to the book. Things that were not in the 2014 book that are in this book yes. include uh, five short sample adventures, a complete campaign setting, a lore glossary, and another totally new feature of this book is the Bastions chapter. That's all new content that we wanted to get into this book, and that's why the book is one of the reasons why the book is bigger. Why it is so chunky? It's a chunky, chunky book. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, so one of the chapters of the book is called Creating Adventures, and it's all about helping the DM create adventures. There are tips and tricks that we can give you to help you do that. But all the advice aside, nothing compares to being able to see the advice being implemented. So after giving you a bunch of advice on how you can create your own adventure content for your home groups, we present five short adventures in a format that we think DMs will want to emulate and use for their own prep, accompanied by the maps that are in uh, one of the appendices of the book. These adventures are meant to show you how you can create your own adventure content in a way that uh, will be very easy for you to run at the table. Perfect. The campaign setting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when you are ready to build a campaign, this chapter does, I think, a, a very good job, a much better job of showing you what a campaign looks like by giving you an example of one, which no previous Dungeon Master's Guide has ever tried to do. And we thought the best campaign setting uh, for this book is the Greyhawk setting. What we do is we give you a poster map in the book that has the world of Greyhawk wilderness on one side and the city of Greyhawk on the other, uh, because we use the city of Greyhawk as a sample of what a campaign hub mm. can be. A campaign hub is sort of the where the campaign starts, it's kind of its center, its core. And then we go out beyond that. We go into the regions around the city and we describe what are some of the um, nearby areas of interest. Because in a campaign, as soon as you strike out from the hub, you need places to go, dungeons in the hills or you know threats in the forest, that kind of thing. We flesh that out and then we go even broader and show you the rest of the land known as Eastern Auric or the Flaneus, this vast region around the city of Greyhawk. We flesh out all of those domains to the extent that we believe DMs need to get sort of a lay of the land, but at the same time saying, hey DM, now that we've given you this, make it your own. Yeah. You know, put your dungeon here if you want to. Um, you know, add a town here if you want to. Uh, that kind of thing. It's very much built on the idea of um, we're giving you a sandbox. Yeah. We're throwing some toys in and we're saying go play. Yeah. Greyhawk is yours now. It is. Yes. That's that's a great way to say it. Greyhawk is yours. The next element I want to talk about is the lore glossary. The Lore Glossary is an alphabetical listing of some of the most famous places, figures, and uh, materials that are so iconic to D&D &D that we want them to be shared knowledge among all D&D &D players of all ages. What is Mithril in D&D? &D? What is Adamantine in D&D? &D? Oh, that kind of perfect. thing. The Lore Glossary captures a lot of that lore that many of us old timers have embedded in our heads. Yeah. <laughs> But a lot of D&D players don't. Yeah. And so this is just an easy, quick reference guide for people who are looking for information about this mysterious thing they've just stumbled upon. So the fourth wholly new thing in the Dungeon Master's Guide that I haven't talked about yet is the Bastions chapter. I am very, very excited for this. So Bastions is, while the word is new to our lexicon in D&D, um, it's built on a very old concept because even going all the way back to the earliest editions of D&D, there were rules for building strongholds. Yeah. Um, often you didn't get access to them, though, until you were much higher level. We have designed the Bastion system in the Dungeon Master's Guide so that characters can start building their Bastions at level 5. 
Wow. Uh, these continue to grow over the life of your adventuring career. But the magnificent thing about them is you can, you basically run them as kind of like a separate little activity. It does not stop you from being an adventurer. Yeah. Your adventurer can go around saving the multiverse, you know, run off to the Nine Hells or run off to the Feywild, do what you have to do. Once your bastion is up and running, it is kind of a self-sustaining unit. And it's the players who run the bastions. So every player is in charge of their own bastion and their own bastion's maintenance. And there are these, um, this mechanism called the bastion turn, which activates whenever the DM basically says, okay, your bastion, now take a bastion turn. You don't even have to be home uh, for your bastion, for something to be happening yeah. in your bastion. But also a bastion is like a mini game, yeah. a mini campaign that the player is controlling. The players are essentially DMing their own microcosms within the larger campaign, um, uh, giving identities to their hirelings in the bastions, um, triggering events yeah. that happen in the bastions and seeing the results and consequences of those events. That's a very DM side of things. And so I love the idea that the bastions are in the Dungeon Master's Guide because in effect, it's allowing the players to get a taste of what DMing is like. Yeah, it's very sneaky. Yes, and it's a it's a wonderful out of game activity. Yeah. Oh, like, it's a great mini game. Yeah. Just a day when you're when you're you know if the session has to be canceled or whatever and you yeah. can't play tonight or whatever, that's okay. Your DM can just say, "Everybody, take a bastion turn." Yeah. Send send the message, and Everyone then off the players go, and they just let the DMs know what they what their bastions did on on that particular turn. It's it's a fabulous sort of game within a game. And then we have just a massive treasury. I mean, tre treasure section. Yes, so as in 2014, the biggest chapter in the Dungeon Master's Guide is the treasure chapter. Loot. Loot. <laughs> yes. Every magic item is getting, you've got a little hairy eyeball. Uh, we took a look at it. We made some refinements to it. Um, we uh, stuffed even more magic items into the chapter to address certain holes or gaps that we'd identified. Um, for instance, there in the 2014 DMG, there weren't a lot of common magic items. Mm. So we imported a few. We also saw opportunity to squeeze in some, uh, shall we say, nostalgic delights. Uh, in celebration of 50th anniversary, including things like uh, magic items used by the kids in the D&D cartoon. Perfect. Yeah. We've also taken another crack at um, the crafting magic items rules. How do you, a player, uh, how do rather, how do you, a character, craft an item of your own with your DM's consent, of course? And is the crafting system also in the player's handbook or is it only the DMG? That is a great question. So the answer is yes. Um, there is crafting magic items in the player's handbook, but it's limited to um, some very simple potions and scrolls. Okay. So you can create a, a low level spell scroll or you can create a potion of healing or some other low level potion. The rules in the Dungeon Master's Guide are broader and encompass more variety. Perfect. Um, then we have an old, a whole chapter on the cosmology of D&D, which talks about the worlds of D&D and the planes of existence that are out there waiting to be explored. Uh, we tried to make them more beautiful this time around. We tried to give you even more useful information as a Dungeon Master about the, some of these places. And... Um, while still making it clear that, hey, you're the DM. What you show of the multiverse is entirely up to you. Perfect. We haven't talked a lot about the tracking sheets. Yeah, tell me about the tracking sheets. So one of the, one of the fun new features that's sprinkled through the 2024 Dungeon Master's Guide, like, like, like candy, are these um, delightfully charming um, tracking sheets that uh, not only do we put in the books as kind of like a show and tell to show you what we're what we mean um, but also we're going to make them uh, downloadable off of our website so that you can just print them out and put them in whatever you use for your campaign journal and these sheets are designed to help you keep track of important information in your game or in your campaign um, there is a, uh, for instance, um, if you want to create a new NPC, there is a sheet that we give you 
that you can use and write on to capture important information about that NPC, and it's presented in a very clean, elegant way. Um, there is a sheet that you can use to build uh, settlements like towns and villages. Uh, there's a sheet players can use to keep track of important information about their bastions. Uh, there is a sheet you can use as a DM to keep track of the magic items that you've dispensed to the party in the course of the campaign, to keep track of um, important character information so that uh, you have some information about the characters in the party readily accessible to you as a DM behind your screen. And then I think most importantly, or the sheet that I find most useful, is the session planner sheet where you know you've got a game session next week. You can write down the key beats of what you think is going to happen, key characters, make notes and other things. These sheets are um, beautiful. Uh, I think they're compelling. Uh, I think a lot of DMs will want to use them or want to create versions of them. Uh, and they have charming little illustrations of monsters on them, which I think are absolutely delightful. Now, I haven't talked about the first three chapters of the book, Todd. That's my fault. I am a terrible interviewer. <laughs> well, tell me, about the, tell me about the first few chapters of the book. Chapters one, two, and three are uh, super important. Okay. And we put them at the front of the book because they're super important. <laughs> that's that's um, a good structure. Chapter one is called The Basics. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, it, it is a short chapter, um, primarily aimed at uh, DM curious folks, folks who haven't DM'd or haven't DM'd much and are curious to really kind of dive in and sink their teeth into the DM role. And then when we, we quickly segue out of there into chapter two, which is called Running the Game. And it is literally that. Uh, it includes a, a sample walkthrough of play. There are similar things in the, in the player's handbook, but this one is more aimed at the dungeon master. When we get to chapter three, chapter three is a weirdo. There's a bunch of topics that have to be covered that don't really, that are so, that are very situational. Traps, how poisons work, mm -hmm. siege engines, um, uh, information about um, NPC building, a bunch, of a bunch of these miscellaneous topics that the 2014 DMG covered, but they were sort of scattered right. everywhere throughout so the These are the building blocks. Yes, it's a good way to look at it, building blocks. We call, chapters three, we call chapter three the DM toolbox because it's, it's just this cyclopedia of miscellaneous parts. Toys. Toys that can come up in play. Um, and we organized it alphabetically by topic. So it is this alphabetically topical listing of different things. You need more information about curses and how curses work. There's a section on curses. Uh, you need more information about hazards like uh, green slime, yellow mold, brown mold, fireball fungus. No. Yes. <laughs> uh, that's all in the hazards section. Everything feels like a new, fresh experience, and like you said, a better experience for existing players who have been playing D&D. But this also feels like the best time to learn D&D now. It is, it is taking the, the wonderful bits of the 2014 Dungeon Master's Guide and resorting them and blending them in a way with new stuff that does, in fact, turn it into a new book. The New Player's Handbook is available for pre-order right now on D&D Beyond. You can find that link in the video description. And you can also find the New Core Rulebooks bundle for pre-order, both physical and digital. Thank you so much for watching. We have a ton of video content coming out about the New Player's Handbook and all the new Core Rulebooks, the new Monster Manual, the new Dungeon Master's Guide. So be sure to check out all of that content. And thank you for watching.